Okay, so I'm going to go back to the old way of doing these faction overviews because it's a little bit more informal and I think it flows a little better than what I've been doing, which is just sort of showing the units. It's better to show them in action, I think. So let me know if it's something that's good or not. If it's not, then I'll go back to the way I was doing them just previously. But if it's good, then I may well carry on doing them like this. And we were up to doing Isengard in this one, so I'll just load up their roster. Okay, so this is Isengard's roster, and it has changed a little bit from vanilla in the sense that they now have access to trolls, the wards are slightly better. The mine is a very unique thing that they have, because it can essentially destroy a ward with just one blow, but it does take a little while to land that blow. They also do have the Uruk bombers from, well, they were in Moss, and I assume that they are in Divide and Conquer as well. Essentially Napatoons. It says that they're suicidal Uruks, but they aren't actually. They are just Napatoons essentially, and they can be useful, but they are pretty awkward to use. Potentially good in a siege, in a field battle, maybe slightly less so, because they're easily cut down by arrow fire. Despite the hit points and despite the pretty good defense, there aren't very many of them, and they are awkward to... it's awkward to get them to start firing. They also have some higher tier units, like the better Guards of War tank, the Wardens of Gunland are also pretty good. But yeah, the Isengard overall mentality hasn't changed all that much in the sense that they are still a solid base faction, but they don't really have a lot of special things that they can use. The bombers and the trolls do add that, and the Nazakai are also particularly devastating as a single unit, but overall Isengard still ring out as one of those factions that have a little bit too much mid-tier stuff, and maybe not enough at the high end in order to be competitive, particularly now that Gundabad has gotten so much better and Misty Mountains will be getting better pretty imminently, Isengard are in danger of being left behind a little bit. They still have some tools that are very useful though, so I will make my general be a Nazakai unit of course. I will also bring a couple of trolls and a couple of berserkers. This is going to be a pretty expensive first wave, but also one thing that Isengard always were pretty good with is their pikes, and they can have a lot of pikes before their cost increases, so this is still a very welcome thing. And also their crossbows are still a very noticeable thing that they have which can do a lot of damage to the enemy. They can only have three before the cost increases, so it can be perhaps a little bit that well, a little bit risky just to bring crossbows, but in this case I'm only demonstrating them against the overwhelming force of an enemy that has only got melee units. So it's more for visual effect than anything else, the battle, but in terms of missiles, the Urukai may be a little bit lacking compared to a lot of other factions, but the crossbows are still very useful if you can use them correctly. Bring a couple of Snaga skirmishes as well, because again, they're potentially very damaging, but they can easily be singled out by arrow fire, even more so than the crossbows. And other than that, it would be a good idea to bring along... We'll bring a unit of Wardens of Dunland, and then fill the rest up with Urukai. Now, you will notice that, this is that I gave myself 20,000, that's very generous, but this is a pretty standard Isengard army, lots of pikes, good crossbows, solid infantry. They, do, they also have their... This top row here is what is going to be winning you the battle because of how damaging these units could potentially be. So I'll also upgrade them. Well, the trolls are probably the most significant addition to Isengard in many ways because of how devastating trolls can potentially be. While trolls aren't quite as strong as they were, relatively speaking, in this submod as opposed to vanilla, they are still potentially very, very damaging. And that can be all important when you're looking to break the enemy lines, particularly when your infantry isn't quite as good as your opposing infantry, which you often have that problem as the orcs. I'm going to be able to get a lot of upgrades, but that's how it is when you have 20,000. I'm going to be able to upgrade the armor and such of all of this. I'm also going to... well, I may as well actually upgrade my trolls have just a little bit more, a little something extra, can I upgrade my Nazakai? I cannot. Berserker? Nope. What about the Wardens of Dunland? No as well. Okay, what about the Snaga? Yeah, I can. Okay, so this will be my army going into the fight. Okay, so my army is laid out, at least with the illusion of organization, and this works out pretty well as a way of just showing the armies in vanilla. I don't know whether that's still going to be the case because of the balance changes, but we'll give this a go regardless. Got a very thick pike line at the front with the berserkers flanking them, the Uruk-Kai infantry ready to reinforce the pike line if it shatters. 
and we have Snaga skirmishes and uruk -hai crossbows and the like. So we'll start and I'll of course fast forward to the point where the armies are about to clash. So the enemy are upon me and I've got a Rohan army and an Ariador army, slightly lower tier forces, I am vastly outnumbered which is odd for the orcs but that is the situation. My crossbows have got a slight hill advantage that's why I deployed further back so that I can actually utilize them properly, I don't want them shooting my own men if I can help it. I've also got the Snaga ready to throw their javelins over the pikes into the opposing forces. They are of course going to try and wrap around, but I have plenty of reserves. Also my very strong infantry is out to the sides here, so we should be alright in that regard. But it's a very simple army composition really that Isengard tend to go for. And they have one very big weakness, which you won't really get to see here because otherwise the AI would not cooperate. And that is skirmishes. Skirmishes are something which Isengard really struggle to deal with because they have no real answer to them. All of their skirmishes are either lower range or lower armor or just outright less effective. So as Isengard, oftentimes you will need to be the one on the aggressive side of things. And pikes can be pretty good at being aggressive if you use them correctly, but in a field battle in particular, pikes can be wasted if they're caught out of position, but here they won't be. They are nice and secure, as the Rohan army is going to meet me first. That is a lot of enemies that are closing in on me. They are going to wrap around pretty severely over here, but that's fine. I'll bring my Wardens of Dunland over, ready to meet them. I have the same on this side, of course, Berserkers and Trolls ready to go in. If need be, I'll send my Nazakai over to this side. If my pikes start breaking, I'll leave at least one Urukai infantry to reinforce them. The pike line should halt though. They have a few units in their midst which could be a bit of a problem. There's Battle Ruddy Dunedain and there's Dismounted Royal Guard in there, but hopefully the pikes will do their job as they always do. They are moving in. We have some Rohan spearmen out on this side. The Rohan spearmen should not be a match for the Berserkers or the Trolls. The Trolls of the White Hand in particular are pretty deadly some of the best trolls. Here go the crossbows firing away. And actually we may as well switch you guys onto fire at will as well. Hmm, looks like you're actually going to try and get into the side of my pikes. Can't be having that. Rohan have met me first, which honestly they probably should have waited for their ally, but just get the Wardens of Dunland in position. And then the trolls can go over here and charge into the side of them. Pikes are going up against Rohan spearmen. They're fresh. All of my units are fresh. They're sending in their rubbish first, which can't say I'm displeased about that. Ooh, that's not a bad screenshot actually. Any screenshot with pikes is always nice. The formation of pikes always looks pretty menacing. And the Isengard pikes are some of the best at that. Well, they're routing already. That is a poor showing. Well, we'll send in the Wardens of Dunland then. Why not? And we'll send the Nazakai out wide. It might be because of the skirmish fire. But the Yorling militia and the Rohan spearmen that they're sending up I'm not going to get a great deal done, it must be said. Ooh. Better just get a, a charge off on them. These Rohan spearmen are doing a much better job than the Yawling Militia, but look at that. Look at those crossbow firings, the Hobbitry at Arms. A lot more Hobbitry at Arms. Here comes the Dismounted Royal Guard. They will do slightly better, but fighting dead on against these pikes and taking javelin fire, they will not do very well. Should have probably committed them to the sides. They would have been a little bit more effective over there. Send in my Nazakai, my general. And in fact, you know what, at this point now that all of the enemy are committed, we'll send forward everything we have. Doing a good job over here. There's still a lot of them back here though. There are some good units mixed in, like the Battle Ready Dumadai. Just make sure the line is thick. Send the infantry through the through the formation there. That's neat. Here comes the Urukai infantry. 
Urukai Infantry always was pretty good in relation to its peers. Now, though, with the emphasis on more elite units, they have lost a little bit of their effectiveness in terms of, well, in relative terms. They are still pretty darn good, and we are now swamping over them. Let's go and have a look over here. Where are the Nazakai? They look fantastic. They're in with the Berserkers. The more armoured Berserkers, as it were. This militia is not going to do the job against trolls, Berserkers, and Nazakai. Ooh. A very big part of their line is broken. This battle ready Dunedain will do a much better job against the Urukai infantry, though. They are still sending forward the masses. This Yawling militia is shaken. That's what happens when you give simple folk weapons and tell them to fight against berserkers and trolls. They have not killed a single troll yet. They haven't sent any armor piercing units over, and it's not like they don't have them either. They are in there. There's also some axe men here and there, but they may have already routed if they sent them in earlier on. Snaga skirmishers still got quite a lot of ammo. Silver Surfer, Urukai over here. Meanwhile, over here, this is a unit which should be losing at this point, and yes, they are. Up against bandits and battle ready Dunedain. Not so much the bandits, of course, but the battle ready Dunedain will do a good job against these guys, because really the thing that Urukai have going for them, next to their contemporaries, is their armor. Their armor's pretty darn good. But, of course, battle ready Dunedain are effective against armor, so it's pretty much useless against such units. There are also some Yawling Swordsmen back here, which are also a pretty decent unit. Simple mid-tier unit like the Urukai. Meanwhile, over here, these guys are pretty much free to move on after being very victorious here on the flank. They're routing behind my line. They've actually managed to get around my line, so it's ironic that they're retreating. Over here, it's kind of all over the place. Wardens of Dunland are a very good unit. Again, they're effective against armor because they have axes and they have hit points. Not quite as tough in terms of their stats as the Uruk High Bodyguard, but I actually prefer them because of that effectiveness against armor. Again, these are things that will probably be rebalanced soon, but the Wardens of Dunland are a welcome addition. Again, the Dunland veterans are always a little bit lackluster, and that's still the case, but the Wardens of Dunland raise that banner pretty proudly on the battlefield now. Dueling Militia, which is breaking. What is going on over here? These guys are up to two gold, and there's still plenty of fodder for the taking. The pikes are just going to stay there in position. No sense in committing them as well. The Breland militia is not going to be able to beat the Uruk High. Send forward the Snaga as well. Snaga OP, please no. Meanwhile, over here, there's they're going to have no answer to the Nazakai. Especially not Hobbitry at Arms. This unit of Urukai infantry has stood up pretty well, honestly, to the pressure it was put under, considering there was Yawling Swordsmen and Battle Ready Dunedain and bandits all around them. They would have lost if not for the Berserkers and Nazakai showing up, though, but it does show that the Urukai overall are pretty survivable and they can bog down enemy units better than most low tier factions can. I say low tier factions, but factions which rely on numbers more so than quality. This Battle Ready Dunedain here has gotten free. This is the enemy general unit, I believe. Yes, it is. Only 65 of them remain. They're going into trolls, which... They're pretty good against trolls, honestly. Any shock infantry is good against trolls now, which I think is right. It's right for the trolls to have a noted weakness. But they really don't have the advantage in terms of numbers. The crossbows are still firing away. Ooh. Now it's just a matter of chasing them down. Again, this wasn't really ever intended to be a close fight, just a sort of demonstration of what you can expect from Isengard's armies. And the Pikes did their job reasonably well. This unit here, 183, they took quite a few losses, but they took also the brunt of the charge. And over here was where some of the more elite units were. I can only assume that there were some Axemen going up against them. And also the fact that the crossbows probably got a bit of friendly fire on them. But again, that's something that really can't be helped, and there is the victory. So, Isengard are, you know, their overall tactics of them haven't really changed. They've got a few new things which can augment this, like the Nazakai, the Wardens of Dunland are a good unit, and of course the Trolls, which are the most significant addition, means they can do the things that the Orc factions 
all that could do before them, which is nice because it allows you to have that extra shock factor. Combine them with the Berserkers and the Nazakai, it means that off a charge, Isengard are particularly deadly, particularly if you can reinforce the said position with the pikes just in behind them. And yeah, Isengard are an aggressive faction, and they have to be because archers are their bane most of the time. Their armor's decent, but they really have no answer to archers, particularly stuff from the Sylvan Elves or Dale and the like. It's going to be a problem. And cavalry could be a bit of a problem, but the amount of pikes and potentially wargs you have in your army will likely do you no wrong against cab heavy factions. So Isengard are better prepared than most to deal with that, I think. But that was Isengard. And next up, I think we will go back to the good factions. Some armies aren't the strongest, nor the most numerous, nor the most well equipped. For some in Middle-earth, all that they are armed with is their courage. That is a story for another day.